Hey guys, my name is Shai, and I was just sitting down to do my weekly reading. Here I am on Sunday afternoon, but I realized that this reading really has to be a pick a card because Mars just moved into Gemini, and of course I like to pay attention to Mars's transits, but they're typically not as big of a deal as this one. This particular Mars transit with Mars entering Gemini is unusually significant for a Mars transit, and part of that reason is that Mars is going to be in Gemini for seven months, which is crazy because Mars is usually only in one sign for like a month or two. So typically, you know, if you have an uncomfortable Mars energy, or if Mars is just like really activating some area of your chart, it's like, okay, whatever, this is going to pass in a month or two, and then we're going to be speeding on to the next type of thing. But what... <laughs> Whatever way Mar like the Mars and Gemini transit is going to be affecting you, it's going to be this background energy for about seven months. And the reason Mars is staying in Gemini for so long is that he's retrograding in Gemini entirely. So it's like he's making these three epic passes all through Gemini. And of course, you don't need to have Gemini placements for this to be relevant for you because he'll, you know, Mars will still be transiting the Gemini portion of your chart, even if that portion of your chart is empty. So um, if you're really interested in this, I would highly recommend checking out your chart. Anything to do with Gemini placements, and that includes asteroids that you have in Gemini, or, you know, if you have Gemini in the fourth house, for example, that would entail, like, this is going to be a ton of communication themed things in your family, and in your, like, in your home, right, to apply it to the theme of the house in which Mars is doing this epic journey. So, Basically, yeah, I'm recording this on August 21st, so Mars entered Gemini yesterday on the 20th, and man, this was like, it hit me so hard. I haven't really experienced ascension symptoms in a few months. Like, for a couple years after my awakening, I had ascension symptoms almost all the time because I was really acclimating to, like, the rapid speed of influx of energies. Now, I typically only have ascension symptoms when it's, like, a really heady influx of new energy. So when Mars entered Gemini yesterday and I woke up with ascension symptoms, I was like, damn, this is going to be intense. <laughs> and it's not going to... Um, like this isn't, we, we, we will get used to it, right? This will become a kind of background energy and this isn't going to be the only thing you're dealing with for the whole seven months here, but it is going to be this significant background theme, like music playing in the background of your life for the next seven months. And um, it's really going to get interesting uh, at the end of October, October 30th, when Mars will retrograde, right? Start his retrograde. And if you happen to have, so this, the retrograde is happening, Mars goes all the way through Gemini, hits 25 degrees. Gemini is, all, so that means Mars is almost out of Gemini when he decides to turn around and goes backwards, right? Or, you know, we had the optical illusion of him moving backwards through the sign, all the way back to 8 degrees Gemini, and then we'll eventually be heading back out again. So if you have any placements between 8 and 25 degrees Gemini, this is going to hit you even harder. I am very per, like, personally interested in this because my 8th house Gemini moon is at like 20 degrees or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but it, it's it within this. So my moon and my eighth house are getting massively activated by this, which is one of the reasons why I am personally so interested in this. So I think before I get to the three different um, cards on this, because Gemini is really an energy of like variety, right? Gemini can be so various and so changeable and so mutable that I was like, this has to be a like a pick a card because it, this is going to be impacting everybody so differently. And the same thing with Mars, right? Mars is very individuated and very like sudden and active. And so this is going to be very, very different themes for different people. So I've like at least managed to separate this out into three kind of different camps, right? Three general camps. So you can feel into which one of these is vibing with you the most. But I just wanted to say that some general themes I think that we might see playing out in the world like at large, um, they could be very different than your own personal themes. Your own personal themes for this Mars and Gemini transit could be one thing, but I, uh, for society, like the, the very general, general kind of mainstream type of thing with Mars doing this big transit in Gemini is we're going to be seeing a lot of communication about masculine energy, right? Uh, communication about masculine energy, and that can play out in many, many different ways. But I, I just... I don't know, I, I just feel so drawn into the fact that we could see like 
you know, because Mars represents specifically not like it, it represents, you know, the divine masculine energy and all of its permutations, but it does also specifically symbolize like men, men themselves, right? Manly men, right? <laughs> Doing their, their Martian things, right? Men are from Mars, that type of thing. So with Mars in Gemini, especially doing a retrograde, we could really see a lot of like men talk, like men trying to communicate on a new level, men trying to even talk about things about men speaking about their thoughts, um, even about their anxiety. Like I, I think we could, we could see a, a trend of like men's mental health coming up in, in, you know, the mainstream kind of discourse and everything kind of related to that. I actually already started seeing that literally yesterday, Mars hits Gemini and suddenly, you know, some men I know were talking like, talk, like opening up about their experiences with anxiety and stuff like that, where people, you know, the kind of people who don't normally do that. Um, of course, it's not just men, it's your divine masculine energy in all of its experiences, but there is something to be said about men, like the manly men, right? The manly men themselves um, opening up to communication. And the more we can support that over the next seven months, it might be... Like what, what, what is the message here? Why, why, why am I really, why am I really stuck on this? Like, let, let me just, let me just see. Cause I feel like this is for someone. Okay. 10 of pentacles. So community, um, community healing, four of swords and the hanged man. So a change of perspective, <laughs> the com and the, the devil underneath. This is so interesting. So it's like there's two sides of this, right? One side of this is the manly men going through their own healing and communication about their personal issues, which they have been keeping hidden, keeping to themselves and like mo moving on from this devil energy, but all, and it coming to a new perspective, uh, like a new level of openness to communicating about their inner experience. On the other hand, we have um, to me, this actually feels directly related to the entire Pluto in Capricorn transit, which has been going on since 2008, right? So that's a massive background thing. I can't really get into the whole Pluto and Capricorn theme right now, but just to point out a couple of really obvious things about Pluto and Capricorn is that Pluto and Capricorn has opened up a ton of discourse about like patriarchy and all of the bad things about patriarchy, right? And, and it's not hard to figure out how that has been playing out on the like the world stage right the public stage the social stage all the type of things and so uh there could be with mars entering gemini a it's like something something coming to a head about all of this discourse to do with toxic patriarchy something coming to a head but it, it's like there's a potential here anyway for society itself to find some type of inner healing and resolution through gaining a new perspective about all of the different conversations and social movements and just all of it, right? All of that. I don't, I don't think I need to get into the details. I think everybody knows what I'm pointing towards. Some kind of resolution and new perspective to do with toxic patriarchy and all of its related themes. But if that new perspective is to be found, it's going to come through this deep level of like collective healing around all of the issues that all of these issues that that society has really been working on everything to do with connected to do connected into the theme of patriarchy that we've been all healing and working through and sometimes really working through on a very volatile level right working through on a very volatile level all the way since 2008 um there there is a real chance here to have some kind of healing, new understanding, new perspective, and ultimately a moving forward for this. So I, I didn't expect that to come out, but anyway. <laughs> because with Mars in, in Gemini, the so just to put one more background theme out there for you, Mars representing, yes, the divine masculine in all of its forms, yes, representing the physical manly men in all of their forms, uh, but also like literally the physical body, literally the physical body. Gemini representing the mind and communication and your kind of immediate environment. So it's connecting 
the mind and the body. This is a deepening of the mind-body connection, a deepening of the mind-body connection, which is such a massive topic. I, I think if, if <laughs> I'm not going to get into that here, I'm just going to put that out there. There's a potential here for a deep, a deep, a deepening of the connection between your mind and your body, but also on a collective level, the like social mind and the social body, if that makes any sense. So with that out of the way, let's see what wants to come through for these three different cards here. So go ahead and Pick your card and I will see you in your reading. Okay, card number one. This is a chakra card, so we're going to find out what chakra this Mars and Gemini transit is going to be highlighting for you <laughs> and of course it's blue with communication with the throat so if you listened to my introductory ramble here this is going to make a lot of sense because I, I, I was actually already you know when gemini is involved it's not a hard stretch to understand that communication and the throat chakra is involved here so here you go and but look at these look at the art here i was just talking about the mind body connection and this is it, right? We have these two, you know, I mean, they're kind of cosmic heads, right? But this is a brain, this is a mind, this is a head, this is a body, and they're connecting, like, with their energy, right? From the third eye. It's interesting, this is a throat chakra card, but you, if you look at the art, it's actually, like, third eye communication going on here, mind to mind, mind to mind communication. And that is really interesting because the thing that I was feeling really strongly... Um, I mean, so Mars has only been in Gemini as of one day for when I'm recording this, um, but that give, gave me enough, enough of a taste about what this is going to be like that I can comment on this a little bit. I was feeling a very strong uptick in like m the, um, my higher mind, like that's how I want to put it here. I mean, yes, it's like my higher self. Yes, it's higher consciousness. But since this is Gemini energy coming through, it really wants to come through as the term the higher mind, the higher mind. And I felt like my higher mind was able to translate into my body mars right on like much more easily and i felt like i could have this new way of translating like the downloads i was receiving and i was actually like dancing like dancing around right like i turned all the lights off and i was dancing and I, I could feel like my higher mind communicating to me feeling like you know getting download getting the inspiration having these like abstract thoughts coming through but i felt like i could really translate them with like through my body's movements on a, on a really new level and that is something i've been practicing for years and that i do already do but it was like suddenly so much easier and i, I could feel like this one-to-one -one, this one-to-one -one connection between my higher mind and my physical human body and i was like wow this you know to just to be able to experience just on the level of like dancing around in your own apartment right that that's like just the beginning that's just the practice really this is this can go really deep because imagine if you could really communicate your divine wisdom or your your downloads or your your inspiration your higher thoughts however you want to look at this if you can pull down that higher data stream when you can plug yourself into the higher data stream and then literally translate it out through your body what does that actually amount to that's materialization of of spiritual energy right literally translating spiritual energy into the physical so it's like this is like a level of communication that is connecting you to your higher self on a deeper level but it is also like connecting your higher self into into the physical, into the physical. Isn't that interesting? We typically think about how we're trying to connect with our higher self. We're trying to open up to our higher self. And it's like all about us establishing this deeper connection. But what if your higher self has been trying just as hard all along? Although, of course, your higher self isn't in this mindset of like struggle, struggle, try, try, try. Your higher self knows that everything is unfolding perfectly. But your higher self has also been trying, like has also been waiting to flow this energy down. But it just hasn't been the right energetic moment for that to happen. But like now it is. Now the channels are more open. The channels are more open. And the more you just allow yourself to be completely open and free with how this energy flows through you, it can flow like right out your body, <laughs> right out of your body in terms of like making art, in terms of writing the novel you've been trying to write for 20 years, in terms of making pottery with your hands, in terms of 
like DIY, like building stuff, even if you have no idea how to do any carpentry, you could build something like with this energy, right? Or even just how you carry yourself when you walk down the street or when you walk into a party and being able to like fully embody your higher mind into your body. And people can see that when they look at you because of how you hold yourself, because of how you move. Um, it's, it's so interesting. And so this actually, on another level, allows you to communicate with other people in human bodies on, on like an intuitive a deeper, more intuitive level. And it's interesting because it, there's a thing here about changing the way you've been thinking about telepathy, right? Changing the way you've been thinking about telepathy, right? Thinking like, oh, I, I want to be, I want to be telepathic, right? I want to be able to have English language conversations in my head with another human, right? Almost like, and we think of telepathy, like, I mean, maybe I, I think a lot of you listening to this are already kind of beyond this um, kind of popularized idea of telepathy, telepathy. So I think you're already kind of beyond what I'm about to describe, but I'm going to kind of start at the bottom of this anyway. Um, you know, we think of telepathy or like mainstream society thinks of telepathy as like basically talking on the phone in your head with someone. And to be clear, that type of telepathy where you are literally like talking English language or whatever language, you know, in your head to someone else and having like a telephone conversation without the telephone, that is absolutely possible. And maybe some of you can already do that. I don't know. <laughs> like that is absolutely possible and that can happen, but that doesn't need to be the way that telepathy unfolds for most of us. And in fact, most of us are are, are taking a path where that type of telepathic connection unfolds in a more like organic in uh like instinctive intuitive type of way where it's not necessarily like a string like a like a, like a sentence playing out in your mind right where it's more of like the thoughts and the feelings and maybe snatches of words but also just like concepts being presented in the mind or being able to watch someone smile and like see the way watch the way they flick their eyes and like it's no longer just doing like the regular human level of interpreting body language but to actually like know what they're communicating because you can actually like experience it yourself like being able to experience what they are experiencing in your own mind right <laughs> if, if that even makes any sense but i think i think you guys know what i mean right this um completely different level of experiencing that like for lack of a better word that telepathic connection there's different ways for it to be experienced and that's kind of a message i've been getting for like myself lately is to understand that like some of the ways we think about like psychic ability unfolding for us. We think, okay, I want to be telepathic. Like I want to use my telepathic ability like a telephone, right? That is actually like, um, like we want that. Well, first of all, because that's how telepathy is portrayed in like popular media and stuff, but also because we remember lives where we could do that. But at the same time, that can be an outdated mode. <laughs> and we're actually moving towards a deeper more compelling more interesting and even more um closely like connected form of interpersonal psychic communication because <laughs> if you think about it um if you if you can truly communicate mind to mind or soul to soul with someone what's even the point in stringing together sentences right because then it, it's still coming through the translation layer of the words and, the, and through the linearization of, la of human language, right? So we can actually go one better than that, right? There is a deeper, more satisfying, more um, connective, more holistic way of experiencing telepathic, co telepathic communication than doing this telephone game in your head. And it's, it's about actually sensing someone else's experience actually sensing it like with your body. And so this whole theme of the Mars, the Mars energy coming through here, it's, so, so some of you uh, already experience this a lot more than others. It really depends like how your empathic, like uh, how your empathic ability kind of unfolds, right? Some people, when they feel someone else's, else's feelings, they, feel the other person's feelings and they they can tell that it's like an external sensation it's like they can tell that that's that person's feelings and they can separate them from their own feelings and, and it's very clear to them other people just have like they they can just cog like have cognitive empathy where they can understand conceptually what the other person is feeling other people can literally feel it inside of them their own selves where this is this is how it works for me actually like um it takes me a lot of awareness to notice 
when the feelings in my own body aren't mine, when they are someone else's. <laughs> and so if someone is over there or if I'm doing a reading for someone and they're on the other side of the planet and they're having their feelings and I feel their feelings as if they are my own feelings and that is I mean, it was, it used to be, I'm pretty good at separating it out now, but it used to be extremely, 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 extremely confusing and bizarre to my life to separate that out because I, I thought that they were all my feelings, right? And so you can literally feel them within yourself. Same thing with, you know, if you ever like physically sense, like physically sense someone else's pain, like in your own body, some people can just feel like, oh, I can feel that your foot hurts. I can feel that your foot hurts and they can sense it. They can just sense that, right? They can sense the pain, but they don't feel it inside their own body. Um, other people like me actually like if if I'm connecting with someone who has a sore foot I will like my own foot will hurt um, like I actually just came home uh, like I've had a sore ankle for about two months like this is an example and I couldn't figure out what was going on like why is my ankle hurt like it didn't make any sense there was nothing wrong with my ankle at all I wasn't doing anything differently I couldn't figure it out I went away on a little camping trip my ankle magically healed itself no more no more ankle pain I come back my, my ankle immediately starts hurting again and I was like, what is going on? And then I remembered that my downstairs neighbor, I had seen him limping, his, on, he, he was favoring his left foot. And I was like, oh my God, like, you know, because when you live in an apartment, the, the people in the neighboring apartments, you're like inside of each other's energetic fields, right? And I was like, I have been feeling his injured foot, his injured ankle. I've been literally feeling it and but it was interesting as soon as I was aware of that I was able to um, separate out the pain and then later that day I, I no longer had to be sensing his his pain I had to like recognize where it was coming from and recognize that it wasn't my pain and then it stopped hurting so all of these all of these different things um, this is how this is the kind of level of commu communication for you guys this Mars in Gemini is opening you up to Nine of Wands, Page of Cups. Seven of Wands. <sighs> this is literally what I just said. Um, in terms of that example with my ankle, right? As soon as I recognized that the ankle pain was not mine, that it was someone else's, I was able to separate myself from it. That's what you guys are doing. So, this is, this entire transit, so the next seven months, I mean, whenever you could be, you could be receiving this video, like in the middle of this Mar Mars retrograde, like you could be getting this sometimes in, sometime in November, maybe some of you are watching this, it doesn't matter, this whole theme of Mars and Gemini through this whole seven months is all going to be about separating your feelings from other people's feelings. And I think I, I am willing to bet that a large majority of the people who are watching this pile one, and if it's really resonating for you, you guys are going to be more like me in terms of how you process psychic energy. Like you actually run it through your own, like your own body and you feel it in your own body. So just like that example with my ankle, some of the physical pain you were feeling could literally be someone else's, right? Um, and that doesn't even have to be people that you're physically near. This could be someone like for somebody, this could be like your ex, right? From years ago, if they have some kind of like health problem, you could still be feeling it because like your energy is still tangled up. That might be a very specific message for like one person. If you're having some kind of health problem and you have an ex that you know is having health problems, you could literally still be experiencing their health problems in your own body. Um, if you need help uh, detaching from that, I would really recommend finding like a Reiki practitioner that you resonate with because they can help you kind of detach from those those energetic cords, those connections. Um, but you can also do that yourself. You don't need to pay anyone to receive that help, right? Just set the intention when you go to sleep, ask for your guides, whoever you want to connect with to help you out on that. But anyway, so more to the, for more generally for everybody else, it's you're going to be learning like emotional pain, right? Or stress, um, feelings of anxiety, especially, especially those of you who like when you walk into a grocery store, do you feel like you don't want to be there, right? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel uncomfortable? Does it feel like, ugh, like I hate, I hate being in here, like ah, right? Picking up on everybody, everybody's energy, everybody's energy, like all, all the time, all the time, and separating yourself from that. It's like you're tired of this, <laughs> and this is also like, like the psychic pain of the entire collective for anyone who feels 
the like when you think about what's happening anything anything that is happening on the planet like literally anything anything that is happening outside of your own immediate bubble of like the room you are in right now you, you think about what's happening on the planet any of those things that cause you pain it, it's like just simply being aware of it is causing you pain it's because you are like feeling the pain like the, the, the screams, like the psychic screams of the entire collective, right? So there's going to be a huge lesson here about understanding that feeling, it's like understanding when to feel other people's feelings, when to feel other people's pain, and when to not, right? When to stop that. So uh, this is going to be like very very important for anybody who like does tarot readings or does any type of psychic readings does any type of energy work for others if you do reiki um and here's the thing a lot a lot of you are already doing these kind of like spiritual services like doing doing you know quote unquote readings or doing quote unquote healings for others and you just don't even know it right when you're sitting there talking to your friend about whatever they're going through you're essentially like <laughs> giving them kind of you know friendly counseling and you're doing energy work for them and you're like even if you're talking about like you know how you how you how you see the situation that's like doing a reading right these things that they don't need to be done in this kind of official like professional context you're doing this all the time in your daily life so there's going to be a huge lesson here about like when to allow yourself to stop running other people's energy through your field because it's like massively dragging your life down because if you're like overburdened by everyone's feelings all the time and overburdened by everyone's pain all the time it's like there's no there's no way for you to thrive under that amount of like existential grief coming from everybody else there needs to be this like you're done with that you need to like rise above that but this doesn't mean that you're going to be like letting anybody down because you, you only need to be feeling their feelings when it is useful for you to do so. So you're, you're, this is actually going to allow you to become even more empathetic with others, right? Because if you're in this constant state of like burnout here with this nine of wands, you could be experiencing like compassion burnout, right? Compassion burnout. You're, you're just like, I can't deal with anybody else's problems all the time. And you can get to the point where you don't even, when someone tells you a story about something that happened to them, it's like you don't even care because you can't deal with it anymore because you're burnt out with compassion, right? Your compassion burnout. So this is actually like gaining control mars right i mean mars isn't really about like control control but it, it gaining the skill gaining the skill gaining the ability to toggle the switch on when you are feeling other people's pain and emotions and when you are not right you need you need to gain this ability to turn it on and off so this is going to be a huge huge thing huge thing about releasing energy and again, I'm going to use myself for example, and I'm willing to bet that's like, you know, because this is going to apply to you guys very, very closely, I think, especially if you do any type of readings, energy work, healings, anything like that. And that includes all of the times you were doing that in your personal life without doing it like professionally, right? Like for me, um, when someone orders a private reading for me, right? Um, and I can feel their energy come in and I can feel all of their emotions. I can feel all of their pain. And sometimes, sometimes that happens even a few hours before somebody orders a reading and I wake up in the morning, I'm like, damn, where is this coming from? Like, where is this pain coming from? Right? Where is this confusion? And I mean, of course, not everyone comes to me in, when they order a reading, not everyone is in pain, right? But like, those are the really obvious ones, right? If someone's really, um, really going through something difficult, I can feel that. And it's like really overwhelming. And sometimes later that day, the order comes through and I'm like, oh, well, that's where it was coming from right now. I know, now I know who, the, what this is about. And so I, I allow myself while, while getting ready to do the reading and then while doing the reading to like fully, fully experience their energy inside my body. And, and I, like, I feel their feelings and it changes the way I talk. It changes the way I move. It changes the way, like my demeanor, my husband can tell when I'm like in the energy of someone's reading, because I'll like say and do things that are completely out of character for me. And he'll be like, mm. You'll be like, Who, who's doing that? Is that you or is that the person whose like energy is running through your system, right? 
it's like really really obvious but then as soon as the reading is done and typically as soon as I send it off it's like I need to like release that because I could I could get trapped in that right I, I could get overwhelmed I could be stuck in this person's like vortex of energy it's so important to like like immediately like release it right so if it's like take a shower it's go outside get in the sun um just it's like I need to completely shift completely shift shift my energy do something else watch a movie read a book like I need to completely shift what I'm doing and that of course takes I mean it, it's like it's very simple but it's not necessarily easy it takes a lot of practice and it happens to be I happen to be lucky in that I have designed like on a higher level I designed my life that my whole my whole life like for the first 30 years like I'm 33 now and for the first 30 years of my life I was essentially practicing the ability to focus my awareness on the emotions and the thoughts that will serve me most and it's just the whole way my life played out all of the all of the experiences in my first 30 years of life was like boot camp for this so i've essentially been practicing my whole life to get to this point where now i can like pivot really quickly i can drop energy and focus on i can drop energy that is no longer serving me and i can focus on um more useful and more uplifting energy quite quickly um but like that doesn't mean that this is easy like I used to find it literally impossible like this was impossible for me for years so if you feel like this is like impossible I promise you it's not it just takes like a dedicated practice and this might be something you practice for years and years and years where you're going okay like imagine your friend just came to you and you met for coffee and you your friend told you this whole story about they're going through this divorce and this this and that and like you're feeling like you know you're crying and like you're feeling their feelings and you're sucked into it and you can feel it taking over your body you're starting to like hunch the way they hunch and you feel yourself getting weighed down and you know and you, you do your best to like empathize with them and I mean because it's easy for you to empathize with them and you know you feel their feelings and you talk it out and eventually you guys go your separate ways and you can still feel that weighing you down for the rest of your day weighing you down and maybe you go home that night and then since you're walking around in that vortex of energy you open the internet and where you know maybe you go to YouTube and now since you're still in that vortex of that schmuck of that weight of that depression right now you're getting videos that resonate with that that's what's popping up in your feed is you literally it's like it doesn't matter about the algorithm right <laughs> the universe sends you the videos that resonate with your vibe and if you're stuck in this person's other person's depressed vibe then you're gonna get depressing videos and then you're gonna get more confirmation that the world is crap and then it's just gonna spiral on out and spiral on out it's like you gotta break out of that downward spiral and it's like it because it wasn't even your energy to begin with it's like someone came and schmucked you all up with all of their their vortex of their downward spiral and you got to get out of that you have to like you have to literally stop thinking about it and that's where it gets hard because if your friend is going through this really hard time you want to sit there and like think about their their hard time and their problem but it's like you actually have to stop thinking about it and so that's why like distraction <laughs> can be the best like literally escapism like pisces escapism right like watch a movie watch a movie that makes you laugh get get out like just it doesn't matter I could list a bunch of different random examples but it literally doesn't matter what you do the main point is that you distract yourself and shift yourself out of that vortex and and into like into a vortex that is more pleasant for you and it is so important to practice the ability to focus 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 on where you want to be and where you want to be going because that's what you'll get more of right this is like really taking responsibility for what you're focusing on and that's really all it is right it's simple but it, but it can it can feel impossible like I know for firsthand for struggling with this for 30 years how hard it can be to focus on the energy that will benefit you but it, it's just it's like learning to drive right it's like practicing driving and I can't drive actually I'm so bad at driving I literally don't drive um, but, so you know but most of you probably drive right you focus on the road you focus on the road you focus on where you're going and you know when you're driving in the car if you like are staring out the window for too long on the side most people not everyone does this but most people will start to drive in the direction they're looking right <laughs> it's like that so you got to focus on where you're going just like when you're driving so yeah you, you you can do it you just keep practicing and you keep practicing this forever until you gain mastery of it and there's literally nothing else to do so you just keep practicing on focusing where you want to be going because that's where you will go <laughs> so there's nothing else to be doing but practice but focus on where you want to be going and you do that literally forever until you become the master of it <sighs> okay I'm gonna leave you guys there <laughs> that is the end of your messages so I'm excited for you guys this is going to be 
transformative is the only word I got, transformative for how you communicate, how you handle and process other people's communication, how you utilize your ability to psychically sense other people's energy, and then how you also free yourself from it and focus on what is useful for you. It's going to, this is like game changing. This is, this is game changing. This is, it can really liberate you from whatever's been holding you back in life. So enjoy the Mars and Gemini transit guys. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. All right, card number two. What is going on with you guys for Mars and Gemini 2022, 2023? So interesting. You guys got the sacral coming out. Creativity. I'm actually guided to read you from the book on this. Let's find out why. Some kind of message in there for somebody. Where is the book? What? What is going on? Oh, here it is. I had it stuck to the side. Okay, that in and of itself. <laughs> um, something you misplaced is actually right in front of you. Okay, something you misplaced is actually right in front of you. It's, it's um. This is strange. It's some. It's like sometimes it's as simple as that. That's the message here. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Sometimes when you lose something or can't figure something out, you don't need to keep fi trying to think. You don't need to figure out why. Sometimes it's simply been misplaced. Sometimes it's simply over there and you will find it when you find it. And, and it's like that's all there is to it. You don't need to overthink it. You don't need to overthink it. It just, it was misplaced for no particular reason, you will find it when you find it and that's it. Don't, don't like worry about it and don't keep thinking about this. Very strange message. <laughs> All right, let's see. What's the book say here? You have called upon this energy today because this is a powerful and important time of creativity in your life. You are forever connected to the life force of the cosmos. The universe is pure creative energy and is here for you at this time. We can embrace this creative power and channel it into our lives. Amazing things happen and the manifestation of our dreams becomes a reality. Have you been feeling a little flat of late with no energy to create what you love? Are you feeling like you are lacking the joy the universe has to offer? Now is the time for you to allow creative energy to light your fire. If you have been pondering over whether to start a creative project such as writing, dancing, learning to play a musical instrument, or taking that painting class, now is the perfect time to in invite this creative flow into your existence. A bounty of creative energy is at your fingertips. What do you love to create? What makes your heart sing? What have you dreamed of always doing? Now is the time to dance in the creative flow of your soul and the universe. Whatever your heart is calling you to do, make sure that you get those creative juices flowing as it will bring joy and healing to your world. The creative energy of the universe flows through every cell of my being. Okay, so this is cool because I feel like for you guys, this Mars and Gemini transit is going to be really empowering and really fun, right? Really empowering and really fun. The sense I get here is that you guys have already been through like a lot of healing, like a lot of inner work, especially when it comes to things like the throat chakra. It's like your throat chakra, you've already done many cycles of opening up and healing your throat chakra. And you've already like done a lot of grounding and stabilizing of your root chakra. And so it feels like the, the logical next step is for you now to step into your creative power. Now for you to step into your creative power. And, and it's like creating from the, from, the, from the sacral, creating from the sacral chakra. 
you know, and this is interesting. Um, I actually saw another reader doing a reading on the Mars and Gemini transit and they, they started the reading going, this is going to be so much about divine masculine, right? Because it's Mars. Um, and then they went through the reading and they kept getting all of these feminine cards coming up and they were like, that's so interesting. So, you know, it, it's like this balancing of the masculine and the feminine. And the same thing is coming through in my reading here, right? Um, I talked a lot in the opening blurb about how this is, you know, divine masculine energy and even specifically about men. Um, but this this is the sacral chakra, right? This is feminine energy coming through. And so what I will say about that, besides just, you know, general statements about balancing masculine and feminine and bringing that into harmony within yourself and also in your external reality, is that... Um, For many of us, it you know, this is interesting actually, because I actually do a lot of readings for people who have like a damaged solar, like an underactive and damaged solar plexus. It, it seems very common specifically for Hadarians to have, to struggle to assert themselves through their solar plexus. This is not all Hadarians by any means. I, there, I, there are some very specific, um, like I'm thinking of all the Hadarians I know, right? And all the ones I've done readings for. And there are definitely a few Hadarians that this is, does not apply to, right? So if you're listening and don't worry, it doesn't, this doesn't apply to all Hadarians at all. But definitely, probably at least 75% of the Hadarians that I have done personal readings for, probably 75% of them have like these underactive and damaged solar plexus chakras. Um, but it doesn't feel like that's what this is about. So I got a little bit derailed there talking about Hadarians. I don't know why that came up so strongly. So my point here was actually that many people, just in general, right, just many humans on earth have overactive, overactive, right, overactive, overactive solar plexus chakras. And that's because of the overbalance of the overabundance of divine masculine energy and the kind of repressed feminine sacral chakra energy so that this solar plexus isn't it's like it's been overactive it's been overtaxed it's been overexerted um exactly like this kind of king of pentacles right so it and i feel like that's those of you with who this reading is this particular reading for this card is really going to resonate it's that you've actually been more in your divine masculine mode um doing things more through as, like asserting your will through asserting your power and feeling probably it feels like you guys like I can really relate to this right I can really relate to this you guys are like me on this where d d various experience in life right various life experiences that have led you to understand that you will never be able to succeed or never be able to get what you want or never be able to even survive right unless you become like a pointed arrow, right? Like unless you become hard, unless you become extremely aggressive, unless you become extremely assertive, right? Unless you really assert your power over others. Um, and I don't mean this in any kind of like really bad or really controlling way. I mean, for me personally, just to give you the example so you know where I'm coming from, like when I was a kid and I faced a lot of bullying at school, right? The, the, those, the bullying experience really made me really fully activate my solar plexus chakra because I, I had to learn how to walk into class with my head held high. I had to, had to learn how to stand there and, you know, and to not cry when all the kids were standing in circles around me throwing rocks and laughing at me, right? I had to learn how to stand in my own power. I had to learn how to just be assertive and to, and to even fight back sometimes, right? Sometimes I had to learn to fight back because I learned that if I, you know, like stood up for myself, and told the kid to go away that then sometimes they would leave me alone for longer right and so that that's a very kind of like simple basic example you know when you go through those kind of hard experiences especially when you feel like you're being attacked that literally teaches you to assert yourself and 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 that's why those kind of soul lessons are that's why we have them and because it literally teaches you to assert yourself it literally teaches you to activate your own inner power right and be this kind of king of pentacles and but so the problem there, that can eventually be a problem when you stay in that kind of mode too long. I know for me personally, I ended up staying in that kind of self-defensive, really assertive, like overly assertive to the point of being aggressive to all people around me. I stayed in that energy for like way too long, right? To the point where I was just alienated and miserable and had no ability to communicate with others on any kind of 
like any kind of interpersonal level at all, right? Um, and and that also completely cut me off from my feminine energy. Energy it completely cut me off from my sacral chakra energy, and that that ultimately cut me off from my ability to be creative and to be artistic and to be emotional and to um, and to manifest through creative arts, right? And I had to to do a whole bunch of work undoing that, right? Like relaxing my solar plexus and so that I could activate my sacral, right? Relaxing my inner masculine, like over assertiveness so that I could become more like, you know, get re get re re in touch with my own femininity, all the kind of thing. So I see that same type of trend having played out in your guys's lives, right? So you're essentially relaxing your solar plexus so that you can re get reacquainted with your sacral and come into a new type of cycle of manifestation where you manifest effortlessly and easily from your sacral chakra like where things just flow out of you it's like it doesn't have to be hard anymore right? you don't need to struggle and strive and fight to survive and you don't need to push yourself so hard things just flow naturally from a place of creative joy flow naturally from a place of creative joy. So literally, as I was saying that, what comes out? The Nine of Cups. So this is a wish come true and emotional maturity is my themes for the for this card these days, right? Coming into this place of emotional maturity. I mean, this is water, water energy. This is water energy. This is things, literally, everything I just said. This card just confirms everything I've just said, right? This is a wish come true, all right? A wish come true, like specifically around manifestation, like materialization, right? Something you've been trying to materialize. And if you've been trying and trying and trying and trying and trying to materialize something and it just doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, it's going to work when you stop trying so hard. It's going to work when you just give up on that. I mean, and it's not that you're giving up on your goal, but it's like you're giving up on that specific iteration of your goal. It's like if you're trying to write a book and you've been trying and trying and trying and trying and trying to write a book for 10 years and you can't write this book, it just never, never seems to work. It never seems to be right. Or you, you hate writing it. It's like pulling teeth, blah. Stop trying to, it's like as soon as you stop trying to write that book and just kind of relax, it might feel like giving up. And then you might find yourself just one day grabbing a pen and just suddenly like writing out like a bunch of short stories, right? Or a, a completely different book or a completely different type of book. Or maybe you make like a photography book, right? Or maybe instead of writing the book, you get in front of the camera and you speak your book, right? Like it's like the thing you've been trying to do, it will come out, it will, it will be materialized in some different type of way. And maybe it is still a book, right? Maybe it's just a different story that you're trying to write. But it's like as soon as you stop, as soon as you stop fixating on that one specific way of it happening and open yourself up to just be like, okay, universe, I'm going to stop trying to force this one thing to happen. And I'm just going to open up and just see how the energy flows through me. And you just allow creative energy to flow through you and you have no attachment to how it manifests. And you just flow, 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 flow. This is like you guys getting into the flow on so many levels then that is when the thing you've been striving and struggling to create for so long just like falls out of the sky or like falls right out of your hands, right? It's like you just ac almost accidentally, almost effortlessly, right? Effortlessly, it, you just create it effortlessly. Queen of Cups. <laughs> so that's the kind of journey you guys, that this is going to represent for you, right? Moving from this King of Cups I'm sorry, moving from the King of Pentacles where you are rigid, where you are a little bit demanding about how things are supposed to go for you in your life, a little bit structured. I mean, the King of Pentacles is beautiful, awesome energy, but since we're talking about moving along along your spiral journey and moving with the flow, you're dropping out of the lower frequencies of the King of Cups and moving into the higher frequencies of the Queen of Cups, where this is manifesting through flow, creativity, and art, manifesting through your intuition, right? And it's just, this is a completely different paradigm for you, right? Instead of being earth energy, masculine earth energy, you're moving into this feminine water energy. Super interesting that that is what comes through for you with this Mars transit. It'd be very interesting to know what part of your chart, like what house or even what planets Mars is transiting for you because it's like this trade-off feeling. It's like this trade-off feeling where Mars is passing off some of his sharper energy. He's like passing off his sharper energy. It's like Mars himself is going through this you know, like maturation process. 
your your own Mars energy. And so this also this also includes for those of you who like to get really astrological about it. If you want to check your chart and find out where your own natal Mars is, your own natal Mars, because he, he he's also going to be vibrating and activating there. And so it's like some of the the, the prickliness, some of the over aggressiveness, some of the like impatience. I mean, Mars energy is always going to be a little bit of impatience, but you know, impatience to the point of like anger, right? Like when Mars becomes like incredibly, incredibly impatient and, and he like reacts to others in anger because he is so impatient. This is what I'm talking about, right? Releasing all of those, releasing and relaxing all of those lower frequencies of Mars energy and really allowing you to come into this new balance right between your solar plexus and your sacral this new balance between your own inner masculine and your own inner feminine energies and i mean it's interesting because this is all happening in the sign of gemini if you think gemini is represented in the tarot by the lovers card which is that perfect balance and perfect harmony between masculine and feminine you could also see you could also see you guys could also see this playing out in terms of your interpersonal relationships especially romantic relationships for those of you where that applies it's just it's very interesting very interesting so this is for you guys Card number two, this whole seven month Mars and Gemini transit, you're gonna be receiving lessons about, and I, but I feel like it's less about lessons for you guys. I feel like you guys have actually already learned these lessons. This is the final integration process of these lessons. So if you, especially during the retrograde period and the retrograde period is, what am I even looking at? October 30th to January 21st. So if you happen to be watching this in that period, in like November or December or the very beginning of January, if you have like one of these lessons that you've learned over the past few years, if you have them come up one more time, know that that, that is just part of the retro Mars retrogrades process. And it's like a final review, right? Or a final review of this. It's like getting closure about this thing, whatever it is for you. Don't worry. You're not starting on a whole new spiral of like going through that again and again and again. No, this is the final conclusion of it. The final resolution, the final closure of it, because you've already learned these lessons about like softening and releasing and letting go and then going with the flow. You've already learned those lessons. This is just the final integration process of it. And once Mars is finally like moving forward again, like in January, February, March, this is when, it, so January, February, March of 2023, gonna be really good for you guys because that's when things are gonna really, you're gonna be like in the groove of the flow. You'll have really mastered the flow. So 2023 for you guys is going to be like the year of flow where you finally get to really put this into practice and creative things that you've been trying to create are just gonna like bam, 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 fall, like just gonna fall out of you because they will come from that place of flow. They will no longer have to come from the place of hard work. They will come from the place of flow. So this looks really good for you guys. I'm excited for you. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. All right, card number three. Okay, I'm seeing stars and getting like a sparkly feeling for you guys. That would like hit me very strongly. This is a chakra card. We're gonna find out what chakra is like representing the theme for this seven month Mars and Gemini transit for you guys. It just, it feels sparkly. Okay, so <laughs> I was gonna say that, uh, I was also gonna say this feels cosmic. Um, I don't know why I didn't just say it, but Okay, 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 give me give me a second. I need to notice what I just did here. This is something I am practicing more and more and more and more and more when I do a reading. I have to also read myself. I have to read my own actions, my own inactions. I have to read how I am behaving because that is part of the reading. And that's also something you guys, I'm sure you guys already do, right? When you're watching me, it's not, it's only like, I don't know, 25% about the actual words coming out of my mouth, right? It's like 25% the words, it's 50% just the energy I'm channeling and transmitting to you. But then the other 25% is you actually like watching my own behavior and then like reading my behavior and kind of getting the meta message from my behavior as a reader. So it's very interesting. And so why didn't I 
speak my mind, right? Why didn't I say this feels cosmic? Why didn't I say that? Typically, because I, I enjoy as a reader, I like to say things and then flip the card over and then I like it when it the card matches what I just said. That's really fun. That is like the most fun thing about being a reader. And to me, this card um, like confirms what I was thinking, but why didn't I say it? Why didn't I say it? So I know why I didn't say it. I wanted to listen first. I wanted to, I was like, no, no, no I'm not gonna speak. I'm gonna just listen. I wanna see what vibe comes through with the cards. I wanna see what vibes come through with the cards and I just wanna, I just wanna listen. I just wanna receive. I just wanna see what comes through with the card. And then what is, what is the thing that comes through with the card? Listening. <laughs> and this is a throat chakra card. Um, and this is a, Wow, I just went like completely blank. <laughs> that That's again, you can read the meta message on that because this is a throw chakra card, but what does it say? It says listening. It doesn't say speaking. <laughs> it says listening, listening. So <sighs> this is multi-layered like everything. On a human level, you could experience this where you find yourself being very silent, especially during the Mars retrograde period, October 30th to January 12th, because Mars and Gemini, when Mars is retrograding through Gemini, that's going to be a lot actually like a Mercury retrograde, but it, it's going to be like even weirder because we're pretty used to Mar Mercury retrogrades, right? They happen like three times a year. Mars retrograde only happens once every two years ish, I think. And when was the last time Mars retrograded in Gemini? I have no idea. I did not look that up. So Mars retrograding in the sign of communication is going to be like a really hard hitting Mercury retrograde. So especially for those of you who are already really impacted by Mercury retrogrades, if you really feel them, this is going to be even crazier. So I feel like a lot of you could find yourself being silent, not wanting to socialize, not wanting to talk, having trouble expressing yourself. That's okay. Um, also, but it, it might also be kind of volatile. You might find yourself like having these weird like moments where you blurt something out <laughs> um, or you find yourself like, I just can't stand it one moment longer. I'm going to speak my mind. And then you kind of like immediately regret it or you find out like, oh, I only made things worse when I spoke up. You could find yourself, it's, it's, it's like the universe is subtly guiding you to like, to speak less, right? To speak less. And it could be coming through in various different ways. And that might be kind of strange because maybe you've been through other phases of your life where you have been encouraged by on multiple levels to speak your mind to communicate more right but and that that doesn't mean that there's no right or wrong here it's like sometimes you receive lessons and messages and energy where it's about communicate speak your mind assert yourself and that is right and good for then and there but this this whole period especially the mars retrograde period is going to be about being quiet keeping it to yourself knowing when not to speak, right? And that is good for here and now. That won't be forever. You will come out of this bubble. If you're wondering, if you're starting to feel like pretty alienated, pretty isolated, some of you even, don't worry. I mean, right, just just look at these dates. <sighs> By January 12th, 2020, 2023, that'll start to chill out. Definitely by the time Mars gets to the end of its stay in Gemini, right? Mar towards so through March, you should start like breaking out of this. Um, this this does not last forever. This this period of silence uh, does not last forever. It's like literally like an initiation of listening, an initiation of listening. So, but this is this goes way deeper than just the human level. The human level is just part of your experience on this. This is cosmic listening, cosmic listening. So this is going to be a period of solitude for you again how, how solitude plays out for each of you is going to be different but there's going to be initiations of solitude initiations of silence and really this is opening you up on a deep spiritual level to be able to really hear the universe speaking to you to really hear spirit speaking to you to really learn to listen. And this is not just listening with your ears. This is like listening on a soul level. Okay, this can play out in many, many different ways, especially if you listen to my opening ramble where I talk about, um, you know, it's not just about English language telepathy, right? It's about 
feeling what someone else is feeling and literally sensing it in your body or it is about the universe beaming down to you some abstract concept some abstract idea and you having you experiencing that in your body as like strange sensations right strange sensations it could be ting like tingling it could be the feeling of your hands becoming really enormous like it, it could be so it could be so many weird things like to give you a very strange example like an example that might seem strange to some of you like the way I like sense the planets, the way I sense the move and the way I sense the zodiac signs, I literally feel them like I can sense them around my body and I can feel it's like a sphere around me and I can feel like, okay, like, like, you know, I can feel it going like Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, can't like Pisces. I can feel all the different signs, like sense them physically around my body. But it's like that this, that sphere can also move around me. But I, and I can feel where the planets are, and I can feel everything move. And so I like, it's like I don't even know how to describe it. But I, I can literally sense physically, physically, physically in my body, like where the planets are and like where the zodiac signs are. But I, it can also like spin and move. And so some days I wake up and I'm like, like, okay, Aquarius is on my left ear. And, and like, so, and I can feel the Aquarius energy, like physically, I can feel it on my left ear. But then like the next day, like, it'll spin around. And I'm like, okay, Scorpio is like my right knee. And it's like, that, that doesn't even make any sense, right? It's like, I never, I've only tried to describe that to one other person before. <laughs> so I don't, it's like, you don't, you don't need to worry. You don't need to worry about that making any sense, right? But that's like my own very strange, like experience of how I, sense this like sense astrological energy i like physically sense it in my body and it moves around and i i'll get these like weird correlations between a zodiac sign and a part of my body and it's like bizarre so that's how weird this can be okay so pay attention to like you just really 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 i could say it a thousand times have to just notice and trust the sensations like in your body and when i say in your body that could be literally physically in your body or this is another thing that's hard to describe it, it's like it can be sensations around your body sensations around your body like if you've ever felt your soul star chakra or like your eighth chakra activate you can like literally feel it about a foot above your head as how do you feel something a foot above your head? Well, it's because your energy body is there. So this is basically feeling energy with your light body, but sensing it physically. It's like sometimes like, you know, if you take your hand and you can feel something that's like away from your hand. You can like feel it. You can sense it. You can sense it. This is about sensory. So it's about sensing things in your light body. It's the best way I can describe it. Sensing things with your light body. So when I say listening, it's not just listening with your ears. It's not just listening with your mind. It's like blasting open your doors of perception, like blasting them wide open and becoming aware. A lot of, okay, for a lot of you, you've already been having all of these different types of sensations. And I mean, how it is for each and every one of you personally, it's going to be very so widely, right? It could be emotional sensations. It can be these light body sensations. It can be physical sensations. It can be thoughts. It can be visual impressions. It can be like sounds. It can be things I can't even imagine because it's unique to you personally, right? It can be like sensing geo, like sensing um, electro electromagnetism. Like, uh, like, I don't even know. It could be so many different things. Um, a lot of you, all of you, I will say all of you have already been having these sensations your whole life, lot, your, your whole lives. And you've never necessarily noticed it to the full extent so there's gonna be two things happening here on the first hand this initiation of listening that you're in which I feel like there will be a slowdown in your life like a little bit of a slowdown at least in some areas where things slow down give you more time give you more solitude give you more silence and that's so that you can notice these things it's if you keep just going full blast if you keep go 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 if you keep working if you keep always talking to people if you're always socializing it's like you'll never learn to listen because you, you it'll be too loud right you can't hear a subtle sound if there's noise <laughs> sorry so something could be going on in your life where you've been where the noise has you've been taken out of the noise one way or the other right and it's so that you can notice these sensations that you've always been having but never fully noticed so on the one hand you're just you're noticing on a more on a deeper level noticing all of these psychic sensations if you want to call them that what you that you've are always had but never fully appreciated never fully acknowledged never fully noticed um on the other hand, 
these sensations, you're also going to be getting new ones. <laughs> this could be like suddenly, um, suddenly like receiving actual English language words from your guides, right? Maybe that only happened to you very sporadically before it could start coming through. So it could come out as listening. It could also be like suddenly receiving more images or really uh, trusting like so much more because it's going to be so much more visceral. Like you, you can see things through one of your other lives, right? You can be retrieving past life memories, parallel parallel life memories, future life memories, right? You're just quantum life memories and you're gonna you're gonna be so visceral that you'll no longer doubt because you'll really, really be listening, you'll really be noticing what is actually happening and what it, it, it'll be so much like purer, more true, it'll be truer for you. And so you'll be willing to to take it, like to trust yourself so much more. So this is a really like a self-initiation of trusting your own sensations. Yeah, so this this is this is like deeply deeply spiritual in terms of advancing on your path and activating your soul gifts like like it's like allowing them to come out, right? Ten, ten of swords. Yeah, so something in your life had to stop, right? Something in your life had to stop. Some of you could have lost a job, you could have gone through a breakup, you could have had some kind of health thing happen, right? And suddenly you're stopped, right? Suddenly you're stopped. Something had to end, something was over. But that is so that you can listen, right? And this is the Ten of Swords. This is the ending of a painful cycle. So whatever whatever was stopped, whatever ended, whatever was done, it was so important for it to be done. It, it had to be. It had to. It had to happen. It had to be done. It had to be over, so that you could open up to this new level of love perception, right? That that door had to close so that the doors of perception could be opened. You know, we say like when one door closes, another door opened. Some door had to close so that the door of perception could be opened for you. Strength, and you are building. You're also listening to yourself and building your own inner strength, right? And to me, I, I get a very clear sense on this. It's like you, you, on in some way, some form, some fashion, you used to kind of run ahead like a chicken with your head cut off, <laughs> kind of like frenetic running around. You used to be too much activity, too much activity, too much running around, too much go, go, go all the time. I mean, and that, that could just be your thoughts racing. Like maybe you had lived a very boring sedentary life, but maybe your thoughts were always on the go, right? So put this how it fits. Um, but it, now, now it's like you're coming to this place of like maturity and stillness where you realize, whoa, <laughs> like, whoa, what was I doing? What was I doing with my thoughts just always running a mile a minute, right? Always worrying about this, always worrying about that, or always running around, always on the go. And it's like, no, you had to come into this place of stillness because that is where you find your strength. Right? That is where you find your strength. But this, this is like the strength of like inner peace, the strength of inner wisdom. And that is what you're building here. And the world. <laughs> Guys, I have not seen the world come out and I don't know how long. It comes out so rarely. So yeah, massive, massive completion on a cycle, right? The, the ending of something painful and then the completion of an epic cycle <laughs> which means one thing ends and another thing begins that this is like you know the ouroboros right <laughs> oh my god okay especially for those of you seeing this during the mars retrograde during october 30th to january 12th know that as soon as things start moving and grooving again right in February, March of 2023 and moving on through moving on through 2023 things are going to start rapidly like rapidly changing like suddenly changing. I mean, to you it might not feel rapid because it, it might take several months, right? So like maybe you're trying to move, right? Like as an easy example, maybe you're trying to move and maybe it takes you 6 months to find a new place to live. I know when you're going through that process that 6 months can feel like for fucking ever, right? But really that is incredibly incredibly fast because the energetic shift that is taking place of you moving to a new a new place right that is a massive energetic shift and it massively reflects the beginning of this new cycle for you so even if something takes months and that might seem frustratingly slow to you just know that this is it's actually happening really fast try to change your perspective on that even if something takes six months and that might be, feel infuriatingly slow that is actually extremely fast okay so there's like a, there's also like a background thing here of shift your perspective of time if you find yourself you know like really kind of stuck in a rut for a few months, if you find yourself really shut down for a few months where nothing's moving, nothing is grooving, that's like a blink of an eye, really. I know three months can feel like forever, 
when it, things aren't working out for you, but really it's like the blink of an eye. Like really, really listen to spirit, really listen to the universe, listen to your higher self, tune into that higher perspective where they like, where you understand that all of this is just unfolding perfectly. And even if it takes a year for something to pan out, that what does that matter? That's like nothing. Right? What does that matter? That's like nothing. So your, your human mind is going to be, might be kicking up a bit of a stink here, right? Not, not enjoying some of the process of this, but that's why you are listening, right? Listening, 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 opening yourself up and tuning into the universal flow of energy, which is going to usher you in your, your brand new world, right? Your brand new world. So don't worry if things are slow for a little bit, you're ushering in, like you're, you're literally going through like a massive pivot point through a massive shift, like completely closing out, <laughs> like to, to be dramatic about it. I would say you guys are actually like completely closing out your entire past paradigm of life existence and setting yourself up laying the foundation for like the rest of your life right having a brand new life experience moving forward you're opening up to your brand new world so yeah if that takes a few months or several months that's fine use this downtime that you're in to feel for your own inner strength and to open yourself up and open yourself up wide on multiple levels listen with all of your senses listen to spirit listen to the universe listen to your higher self whatever energy it is for you, right? Just open yourself up and just open your awareness up. Blast open those doors of perception. Notice everything. Be aware of everything. Listen with your soul, right? Listen with your soul. Because then you can move forward using that guidance, right? You're going to be, you're opening up to a, such a deeper level of guidance that you, it's not even guidance. It's like you're opening yourself up to receiving these flows of energy from a level of consciousness that you were previously not connected to. So you're connecting into a much more deeper level of consciousness, like higher consciousness, deeper consciousness, primordial consciousness, however you want to look at that, right? It's like, this is a new experience of consciousness that is flowing into you. You're calibrating it, you're weaving it into your own physical body and your new life, your new world will be built using that deeper level of consciousness that you did not have access to before. And that is why everything will be different now because you'll be operating from a new level of consciousness, a deeper level of consciousness, a higher level of consciousness. Take your pick, right? <laughs> and that's why it's an entirely new paradigm, an entirely new experience of life because you've braided in or you currently are braiding in an aspect of your own consciousness that you have not utilized in a long time, right? It's being returned to you. Your own consciousness is being returned to you and your new level of consciousness will see you through your new reality, your new life. So sending you guys so much love and light. Talk to you later. Bye.